Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Greetings and welcome to episode 254 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Albert. And my name is Barbara. It sounds like you forgot what number you were on. <laughs> Was it that obvious? <laughs> 254, baby. Yeah. 250 something. How are you, Barb? What's happening? <laughs> I'm good as always. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So. I know we mention it all the time. I know people are sick of hearing it, but I actually had somebody ask me today if I was going to be in Chicago. And I'm like, seriously? Oh, well, you must not listen to us. New listener alert. Yeah. So let's just make a mention. We're three weeks away now. Only three more episodes we're going to talk about this. But yeah. Barb and I, we're going to be where? The Iva Clark Ballroom AB during LMT Lab Day Chicago. All afternoon Friday and all day all Saturday. Day. Yep. So come find us, sit down, talk to us, and I might just come grab you. There you go. And if you come up and you see us already recording. Wait. Or come back. Or come back, but we all know the chances of coming back are slim. <laughs> Elvis likes to get a whole hour in, but when we do these, we, we shoot for about 20, 15, 20 minutes. And so you won't have to wait long. Absolutely. So please come see us. And only two more episodes after this, we'll mention it. And then we'll finally talk about something else, we promise. <laughs> or sign up for Cal Lab meeting and you can come see me on a panel first thing Thursday morning talking about recruiting, hiring, and training, which we all need. So I'm excited. Absolutely. That's a good point. Cal Lab. I mean, people can still sign up for that, right? Heck yeah. Up until the day of? Yep. Or the day of. Actually, yeah, for sure. Don't you have to be a... A certain size lab to get nope. in no nope. you just have to be a laboratory and did it used to be a certain size no no oh, what am so. i thinking that's what she said oh. <laughs> boing, 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 boing. so yeah seriously look into calab c-a-l-l-a-b.org yep come see me yeah barb's gonna be on stage unfiltered yes i'll be front row with the bleep, bleep all right ready to go i'm gonna be on my <laughs> best behavior oh Aww. When I'm on stage, I always have to be on my best behavior. And you know what? I just love being able to present and, and give, you know, labs out there a chance to figure out. I mean, everybody's going through the whole recruiting and hiring and training. And it's it's all we're Constantly. all struggling to find technicians. So my dad always told me if you could get one pearl from, uh, you know, somebody up there talking about something. So I'm hoping that the panel will be that pearl. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. going to be great. I can't wait for that meeting and Chicago. So. Yep. Three weeks. Three weeks. So, Barb, we are ex- super excited to bring this week's guest to the podcast. Oh, yeah. So, we actually recorded this quite a while ago. I mean, it's been a hot mm-hmm. minute. Mm-hmm. But he actually asked us that we delay the release a little. So, this interview will actually come out when it officially becomes official. Officially. Officially. Most labs have used full contour. I'm sure every one of our listeners has used them at some point. Even if they do most of the designs in your lab, they do all of your designs in your lab, or just a few to help out when you need it, full contour has always been there. Rob Lejeur comes on the podcast to give us, ready for this, the full story of full contour. Come on, that was the greatest play of words ever. I was going to say full Monty. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope not. You got it. All right. Rob talks about him and his dad opening a dental lab that was 100% outsourcing. From that, they learned that creating relationships was important and saw a need to offer a service that only provides designs. Starting with only three technicians in a small apartment, they started to scale and they grew. Eventually, Full Contour became a common name with over 150 designers and integrations with all the popular manufacturers. Rob and Full Contour are now part of the Three Shape family and with their combined forces are taking it to the next level. Rob not only talks about the journey of the design services, but he also talks about creating a successful artificial intelligence that will allow labs to scale and grow even more. Mm-hmm. So join us as we chat with Rob Lejeure. (laughs) 
Are you attending the LMT Lab Day Show in Chicago from February 23rd to the 25th, 2023? If not, you should, because Ivoclar is going to be there to celebrate their 100-year anniversary in the dental industry. In the Ivoclar Grand Ballroom A&B, get up close and personal with Ivoclar digital technology, materials, and the epic speaker lineup. Learn firsthand from many of the industry's leading dental professionals as they share their tips and tricks for success. Come and hear from the greats like Lee Colt, Esther Schwenning, Yuki Moma, Dr. Ed McLaren, Eric Kukuchka, and so many more. For a full list of speakers, simply visit lmtmag.com or the link on this episode and register today. But don't just go for that. Make sure you stop by and come and see us, Voices from the Bench, as this will be our home on February 24th to the 25th. Come by and say hi, record with us, and tell us what inspires you, or heck, just give Iva Clara a happy 100-year shout-out on the podcast. We'll see you there, and as always, we appreciate your support of the podcast, Iva Clara. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. Yo, absolutely. I would never do this live. I'm not I'm not stupid. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to welcome to the podcast today. You know, Rob, I think I first heard of you. You presented to a CNC group in Chicago in probably 2018. Oh, cool. And, yep. And that was the same lab day where I had the idea of the podcast, and I made a list of ideas. And one of them was talking to somebody about outsourcing designs. Four and a half years later, Rob Lejeur. Did I say it right? Lejeur, yes. Lejeur. Oh, Rob Lejeur wow. from, and I put it in quotes because I don't know if it's around anymore, Full Contour. Yes. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, and... When you say if I don't know what's around anymore, that's that's a good gut instinct because we are rebranding ourselves Q1 of next year, Ooh, and nice. we will sunset the name Full Contour, and we will become Three Shape Design Services. Sweet. Yeah. That sounds exciting. I like Full Contour better. Is that okay? I know. <laughs> My brother, Jesse, and I registered the... I remember sitting there on GoDaddy going, what are we going to call ourselves? <laughs> all these names. Yeah. And we're like, see if, see if Full Contour is available. And it was. And we bought it for $12. And it was the best That's cool. $12 That's we spent. Cool. Okay, so before we get into it, do you remember oh, yeah. any other names you thought of but didn't go with? Yeah, all the classic like My Design Center or outside Dental Design, CAD Technician, like all these things that were more descript. Yeah. But I wanted something that could be a little bit more of a brand name. Sure. And and also short and sweet, right? Like the shorter and sweeter you can make your domain name and your business name the better. And Full Contour was available. And That's so amazing like, that right. it was, honestly. Yeah. I know. We were kind of surprised. So take Elvis and I way back or farther back than even full contour. So like, how did you get into the industry? Where was your start? I don't know. I'm sure you've been around a little bit of a while after all the transitioning, but like what started it all for you in dental? Great question. In 2006, my dad and I started a dental lab and that was the beginning of our entrance into dentistry. Neither of us had any experience so I went to the school of hard knocks of just literally <laughs> doing a, a dental lab startup. And um, yeah, that's, I mean, there's a whole long story there. We could fill a lot of time, but to summarize that, we had some manufacturing relationships in China and we wanted to do uh, some outsourcing and we, we saw dentistry as something we could enter into. And we wanted to do something high quality. Like we didn't want to go after the like $49 PFM. We wanted to go after like a, a $200 aesthetic crown and do it with low cost labor, but actually price it reasonably. And we had a relationship with Noble BioCare and we got a Forte scanner and we specialized in exclusively did Nobel Illumina. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Days? Yes. And I do. Nobel Zirconia Copings. And then we were using the Nobel Rondo porcelain. And that's all we had on our price list was Nobel Illumina, Nobel Zirconia. 100% of it was made overseas. And it was a tough sell, to be honest. This is 2006. 
and it was it was a rough road but but we we grounded out and we built our lab to a few million in sales and then we eventually sold it that long story short and then we focused on full contour why did two people that had no idea what a dental lab really did why why did you start a dental lab you know I, my dad and i ask us ourselves that question all the time <laughs> Uh, I remember I went to my first trade show with Mill Bell and uh, they were doing a training and I asked, a, I, I announced that I was going to start a dental lab and I'm asking this, this gal some, some questions. And I asked her, my first question was, what's an abutment? And she, <laughs> she looks at me and she goes, didn't you say you're, you're going to start a dental lab? And I was like, yeah. And she looks at me and goes, oh, honey. And I, <laughs> I could just tell like me asking this question, what's an abutment? And also telling her that I was going to start a dental lab. She felt really sorry for me or something. <laughs> Honestly, my dad and I are entrepreneurs. Uh, my first business out of college in 2000 is I, I bought and owned a photo lab printing film. So my wow. first business, I was printing film. I lived through the transition. Of... I was going to say, how's that going for you? <laughs> exactly. Oh, it's good. That's where my passion was born for, for digital because... Huh. My photo finishing business went, we had to shut it down because how many people even know what a, a canister of film is? Yeah. But I built a business where photographers were bringing me their film and I had great relationships. I was like their technician, right? They'd walk in, they knew sure. my name, I knew what they wanted. Well, they all bought digital cameras and then they could all send their digital images anywhere in the world. And then eventually they could get prints for a third of the price that I could offer. And so our photo finishing business was decimated by digital. And I, wow. there was nothing I could do about it other than just sort of lick my wounds and move on. And then we started our dental lab and we, we did a lot of education and CE and we built relationships. And then in walks a salesperson for iTero. And this was probably 2008, 2009. She mm -hmm. hands me this brochure of the, you know, she called it the digital camera for your mouth. And, you know, you ever someone like ever, they're talking to you and they tell you something and all of a sudden their voice fades into the background because you're now just, you're kind of off like daydreaming. <laughs> Every week on this podcast. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So she's giving me her sales pitch and I'm completely not yeah. listening because I'm looking at this brochure and in my mind, I'm thinking, holy shit, the, the yeah. digital camera is here. And what am I going to do about this? Wow. And it like made me like nervous and excited at the same time. But it was this big light bulb of like, man, this is going to change dentistry just like it changed photography. Mm. And I still think we're in the middle of that transition. So you got ahead of it almost, right? You were ahead of it because something visionary went off in your brain. Yeah. Yeah. So we bought 10 Itero scanners. Yeah. Yowza. And remember the 200 pound ones with the foot pedal, right? Yeah. Those, yeah. those big ones that you could <laughs> barely fit in a car. Um, we bought 10 of them and we tried to give them away to our doctors on contract. And we were blown away that no, they didn't want them. You yeah. Know, they're like, I don't want to sign a contract. How do I know this thing works? And I'm like, this thing is amazing. Your margins are better. Your contacts are better. Your occlusion is better. Right? Everything's better. And we couldn't even like freaking give these things away. We were so ahead of the market, but we knew that digital was coming and we knew that people would start to see that. And we just kept placing our bet there. And yeah, that's where the, the vision and the passion for Full Contour was born out of is this, this vision for digital dentistry taking over. So you didn't fear that it was going to do the same thing it did to photography. I did if we didn't leverage it. So in photography, I bought a, a digital photo finisher, a digital a printer so I could print digital photos. But what happened was all of the major players went online with these multi-million dollar websites yeah. that you could buy these prints. And so what I knew is, okay, we have to leverage this digital transition and get ahead of it and actually be drivers of it and figure out a way to monetize and commercialize something in the midst of this transition. Otherwise it's going to, it's going to take us by storm, right? I mean, sure. How many lab owners thought, Oh, is it full zirconia crowns? Those are never going to be a thing. Oh God. Yes. Right. That's so and they stuck yep. their head in the sand and now either they went out of business or now they have a mill, right? Yep. One or two options. And they had to catch up pretty damn fast, yeah. too. That's, yeah. Hmm. Exactly. Sounds familiar to what's going on with digital dentures right now. 
Exactly. <laughs> yeah. A lot of transition in digital dentures. So you made an Itero rep real happy, apparently. Yes. <laughs> we didn't hey. buy another 10, though, because we couldn't. <laughs> couldn't sell them. Couldn't get them. Couldn't we, yeah, we could barely place the 10 we had. So what did you do with those 10? How did you pivot from that? So we eventually got them placed. It just, we had to talk to about 100 doctors versus, I thought, man, the first 10 big accounts we talked to, they're all going to take them. One would think, yeah, especially back then. Yeah, we had to talk to doctors that were heavy users that trusted us, like they were taking it at our word, and that mm -hmm. the contract was a 30-day, like they could get out of the contract without any long-term commitment. Yeah. Yeah. And then we were finally able to get them placed, and they worked Honestly, they were amazing. I'm kind of curious how you went from buying 10 scanners, like Elvis said, and you pivoted. So you were still on the lab when you did that, right? We did. We were leveraging digital as much as we could in the lab. We built a workflow where we were sending a tarot scan data to our lab in China, and they were milling models and making crowns. And we were building wow. some really cool stuff. And my dad is, is really good at networking and building relationships. And we were out at Newport Beach meeting with Mike Gerard, who at the time was- the Oh, yeah. I know him. Yeah. He's yep. awesome. Founder and owner at the time of Diadem Precision Technologies. He sold it to Ivoclar, who then I think they sold it to Core 3D. And then I, I don't know what, what's up with it now. But anyways, so Diadem Precision Technologies. And then Greg Harris was with Issaquah Milling Center up in oh, Washington. Yeah, yep. And so we met with them and we were trying to sell them digital crowns and stuff we were making in China. And both of them were like, you know what? We're not interested in your physical stuff. But if you started a design center, that's kind of a mm. bottleneck that we're dealing with. We would buy designs from you. This was <laughs> July of 2010. Wow. And by September, we had a website. We had three designers. We had some CAD software in, a part, in an apartment. And we launched Full Contour with Issaquah and with Diadem, and they were our first two customers. So what's crazy is our first week of business, we invoiced $75. And it's, wow. it's kind of funny to say it that way, but honestly, how often can you start a business and you have two customers willing to spend money with you literally the week you open your doors? Heck yeah. And it was designed, so you know it's not like $25 a piece. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a fair amount of them. So who was doing the designs at the time? We hired our own technicians. So this was our own business. So when we had the dental lab, it was a joint venture with a pre-existing lab in China. When yeah. we started Full Contour, we're like, you know what? We're going to own this from top to bottom. So we formed our own corporation. We got our own apartment, our own office. And it was something that we owned from top to bottom. So we weren't outsourcing it. We owned it. So we hired them and trained them ourselves. Wow. You hired people off the street or you hired technicians that knew how to design? We only hired technicians. Well, at the time in 2010, design was not very popular at all in Good China. Point. It was yep. very manual. So we had to convince these young physical dental technicians that were waxing and casting and doing oh, it. Geez. We had to convince yeah. them that they had a bright future doing <laughs> CAD design. So my brother, Jesse, the first 10 people we interviewed, seven of them said no thanks because they thought mm -hmm. it was like a false promise. Yeah. yeah. But we finally convinced a few. And you started with just, you said four? Three. 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 Three designers. Three designers. Had... They didn't even know how to do a design? Like you had to teach them like all, everything? I mean, obviously they knew the contour of a tooth, but like Correct. they had to, it's like, wow. Our first three designers had never used a mouse or keyboard. Wow. For for in dentistry, maybe to like check their email or something. But yeah. the idea of designing a tooth in 3D software, they had literally never done it. So we had shout out to Mitch Jula. He was our original trainer uh, for Diadem. He we bought our first three seats of three shape and dental wings from Mitch, and he trained our designers on both systems. Wow, it was awesome. Yeah. So it all started with three people and three seats in a tiny apartment. Literally. And then my dad and brothers and I... Is this in California? No. So they were in Shenzhen, China, our first three designers. And then my dad and brothers and I were in our house in a remodeled bedroom making sales calls out of our, our home office. In 2010, we were calling labs saying, can I speak to someone in your CAD department? And they were like, half the labs didn't have a CAD department. right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and yeah. then we would change our pitch like, can I speak to someone who works with your three shape? And they were like, what? 
right? like <laughs> not even everyone knew what three shape was. So it was a rough go. It was, we were definitely on the bleeding edge, but we believed in it. We believed that it had a long-term future. Mm. So originally everything was still done in China. You never had designers here in the U S we've never had designers here in the U S we okay. have Cole Bishop. Now he's a CDT. He doesn't, yeah, sure. he doesn't do any designs for the sake of production, but he does a lot of designs for R and D and for quality management and for training and, and customer uh, feedback and that kind of stuff. But, we don't have any designers that do production type work in the States. He's also there That's for muscle, right? I've seen that. Guy yes. That yeah. He collects, our, <laughs> he collects past due invoices <laughs> as a side job. Okay. So three people and two accounts. Yes. Where do you go from there? You said you started calling labs. Yes. I mean, how long did it take before this thing caught on or before people started realizing the benefit? You know, I'll, I'll give some early shout outs. So Dennis Lanier with Lab 2000. Yeah. Early customer. Dental Services Group. We picked them up. Denmat had a Lumineers design. And so we picked them up as a customer doing Lumineer design. And honestly, so we, we got some big corporate accounts like DSG. Sure. And then, and then some of the mom and pops, they like, they bought their system and they're like, yeah, we got one designer, but we don't know how to scale it. Or they only know how to do copings and they don't know how to do bridges. And can you help us? And that's how we got into it. So how do you scale up fast? Like you sound like, I mean, you, you picked up some very decent accounts. Like were your designers doing like a hundred each or did you have like a training? You were constantly training new designers. I mean, cause you seem to have grown really fast and you never really dropped the ball on quality. So like, how did that happen? You know, growing anything in dentistry is always hard right? Scale and quality, it's like, it's the never ending discipline of this business. How do you grow with people and how do you keep quality consistent? It is a constant discipline of training, of accountability, of feedback loops, and then training and then accountability and then feedback loops. And, you know, and that it's, it's literally the never ending discipline. And, And so today we have over 150 designers in China and Costa Rica. And, you know, we didn't have any explosive growth. And Barb, I think you can appreciate that. It's just really Mm -hmm. hard to grow exponentially in dentistry. Like to have five designers and grow to 50 designers in a month, that's just not possible. Not keeping quality the same. So our relationship with DSG was a good one where they knew that we had to hire and train and grow at a reasonable level. And so... We onboarded five labs and then we were hiring, training, hiring, training, and then we would onboard a sixth, seventh, and eighth and hire and train and hire and train. And it was a really close partnership and kudos to Richard Harrell. He really had a great relationship with us and us with him. And he was really the spearhead to DSG partnering with us and coordinating our scale up in a way that achieves success for both DSG and Full Contour, because it is not something that you can just grow overnight. It takes a lot of discipline. Yeah, I know him personally, and I'm super impressed with the guy personally, but I can tell with that kind of partnership how it enabled you guys to do that. That makes a lot of sense. And he was a super early adapter, so I'm sure he was ready to go, but that's great. He was. The triangle workflow that we have with Argon, where a customer can upload a case for us to design, and then we will automatically send it to Argon on their behalf it will go into their Argon Link account, and then Argon will manufacture and drop ship it back to the lab. That was because of Richard Harrell. Wow. He said, hey, guys, we have this relationship with Full Contour and Argon, and we want you guys to integrate. And we had integrated with Excel spreadsheets. Oh, my gosh. Oh. It was a mess. Yeah. <laughs> but we had to start somewhere, and that's yep. what we did. And then once we validated that it could work, and we were doing it with human workflow, we then quickly were like, all right, let's build some automation here to drive out human error and to create consistency. And so that's where the manufacturing integration that we now have with, I think we have over 30 different manufacturers we integrate with. That started with DSG and with Argon and their desire to really lean out the process. Fantastic. Wow. So you do that with more than just Argon, the lab I was previously at. We use that feature a lot, but you do yeah. more than just Argon. Yeah, Argon, Core 3D, and anyone that's manufacturing, we don't charge for that integration. It's it's a free integration, meaning the manufacturer gets to charge whatever they want to charge to the end user for their manufactured product. Mm-hmm. So we'll integrate with anybody. Uh, I think we've got like 
I was actually trying to look on our website right now, uh, like over 20 or 30 different integrations. And when you say integrate, all you're doing is moving the data on behalf of the client. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So yeah, we work with the implant company. So we have an integration with Strauman and Noble BioCare and those types. And so some other large ones and then small ones. If you go to fullcontour.com forward slash integrations, you can see every one we have there. Oh, you still have the website Full Contour, huh? We do. It's going to be changing, but yes, it's still alive. It's still alive. So walk us through the transition. You said that you sold Full Contour. Is that correct? We did. So you still say we. So are you, you, obviously you're still involved. So what does that look like? How is that transition going? Yeah. So it was my dad and my three brothers started it. So a dad and four sons start a Full Contour. Then one of my brothers left in the first year and a half, two years. So then it was me and Jesse and Micah. Mm -hmm. We had all been together up until just this last one year. But my dad wanted to retire and we had incurred some debt and some startup capital to do some of the growth that we wanted to do. And he wanted to transition the business to his sons. And he we all felt that the best way to do that was to find a strategic partner that believed in us and wanted to grow. And we talked to a number of different companies, some dental companies, some private equity companies. And boy, I got to say that, uh, you know, if you're, if you're trying to take strategic money, beware of taking money outside of dental because it's a blessing and a curse to take money outside of dental. And I think it's, it was to our advantage, a huge advantage to have three shape as a partner because they, We spoke the same language. We're in the same context. They understand how the the industry works. So we met with Nikolai and Tice, and this was probably 2016. And at the time, we were their single largest customer of design software in a single site. I mean, they had customers that had more seats than us, but out of a single site, their single largest. And we were their single largest customers that did design, that did the volume of designs we did. And we just, we got on the radar and they just, we're really curious about our business and long story short, when they found out we were interested in taking on a partner, they asked if we would consider them. And we said, of course. And initially we thought about selling a portion of our business, but then it was just easier and cleaner to sell the whole thing. And so uh, three shape acquired a hundred percent of full contour on July 7th of 2017. So we sold the business and I that became... long ago, really that long ago. Yes. Jeez. Yes. Three shape didn't want to disclose it to the market right away. Oh, okay. Um, a little yeah, hush deal, huh? You guys meet in a dark parking lot or something. And <laughs> yeah, it, uh, no, it was just a three shape, you know, it was really risk averse. And I think actually they think they're really smart, astute business people. Sure. And they're like, you know, we don't want to disrupt the full country business. We want you guys to just be successful as you are. We don't want to make any changes. I mean, when we did the deal with three shape, and we flew out to meet them. I had no idea what to expect. And I'm like, I don't know if this is going to be a cap deal with Henry Schein and I'm going to be gone Ooh. in 30 days. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. <laughs> or Ooh. or if uh, if I'm going to be happy. And we, we go out there, we meet with them, and they said, all right, guys, there's three things we want to talk about. And that's it. Just three things. How do we help you grow? How do we help you not lose money and don't change anything you're doing? And I was like, wait, that's it? It says, how do you grow? Don't lose money and don't worry about changing your business. Meaning just keep being full contour as you are. Don't worry about like, there's nothing we're going to do to make you change the way you operate. We just want you to grow your business and we don't want you to lose money. So how do we just do those two things really, really well? And that was super refreshing. Yeah. That was it. That was our recipe for success. So all we talked about was innovation and R&D, and we, we started making early plans for AI development back in 2017, and it was really, really exciting, and it was really, really refreshing, and they, they made some early investments in us. After they bought our business, they continued to invest capital in our business to help us grow and help us take advantage of some different technologies, and it was awesome. Honestly, my experience with selling our business and transitioning to a as a three shape company has been a really good and positive experience. Yeah. And, and I don't just say that the fact that I'm still here five years later should demonstrate that I'm, I'm really happy with the way things have gone. Yeah. And it totally does because you made the comment about another company and then you're gone in 30 days. And that's a huge risk, especially after you build something that you you're super proud of and you're taking a risk and you know, you're still here, you're still jamming. 
company's doing great. And yeah. You couldn't have picked a better partner. Or... No, I mean, we've almost tripled full contour since three shape bought us. Wow. It's fantastic. So it's, it's been a, it's been a fun ride. What do you think accounts the most for that tripling? Is it just exposure through three shape? I think it's a, a combination of many things. I, I think exposure through three shape has been helpful for sure. You know, a little bit of like, you know, focus and marketing and branding, like they've really helped us mature in that regard, but also just digital dentistry as a category yeah. has just really exploded. And, you know, I, I tell people like, yeah, there's some things we did that were wise and yes, we we're entrepreneurs and willing to take risk. But part of what it was, was we placed a bet in 2010, my dad and I, my brothers, we placed a bet that said in the future, there's going to be a big demand for outsourced design. That, and we placed a bet and that bet has paid off and it's just grown. And, you know, every time a lab does more digital work and every time a doctor buys an iOS scanner and wants to send an iOS scan to their lab, you know, just the whole category of digital design and, and printing and manufacturing has grown. And that really has spurred on our business. I mean, if you look at the, even through COVID, the post COVID era was just hyper digital, right? Because everyone was like, how do I be as efficient as possible, as lean as possible? Well, just do more digital, right? Because yeah. that, is, that is lean and mean. Yeah, I imagine after the pandemic and after, well, use that term loosely, but when dentistry got back, I imagine your business model just saw a huge increase with the, with the labs having trouble finding people, having trouble bringing people back. 2021 was by far and away our best year ever with revenue and profits. I 2021. Bet. And I think it was from most labs I talked to, it was one of the yeah. best years ever. 2022, it might be the same as 2021. Interesting. You know, yeah. It's the, the second half of 2022 has been a little soft yeah. compared to the first half of 2022. I don't, I don't know what you guys are seeing. Out oh, there I've heard that a lot. Yeah, yeah I've I seen that. Be. I would say, yeah, last three months for sure. It's, it's weird. Especially for November. Were you the first in this space? I think so. I don't, if you know, it's funny, Elvis. I learned a lot about trying to raise money and, and uh, sit in front of private equity people. And at first, I was really proud when they would answer the, they'd ask the question, so who's your competition? And I would very proudly answer, well, nobody. And they would kind of mm. like smirk and take some yeah. notes. And I come to find out that's actually a bad answer. <laughs> <laughs> if you're trying to raise money, and you don't have any competition, what it says to that investor is no one's dumb enough to do what oh, you're doing. Oh, God. I would have thought about it. <laughs> that makes sense. So, so yeah, I, I couldn't find a competitor. So then, so then I'm like, man, I need to find somebody, even if it's just a pathetic competitor. So I can at least say, here's my competitor. So, yeah, I don't think in 2010 there was anybody doing mm – -hmm anything serious at scale. Maybe there was some people doing it remote at home or something, but yeah. uh, I don't think anyone was doing what we were doing nope. at that time. I think Evident, Easy Dent were the first two ones at scale to compete with us on the, on the Crown of Bridge side. There's some other ortho specific ones. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And all the abutment companies, they were almost offering that design service too. Yeah. For their abutments. Exactly. And Atlantis, were they before or after you? That's a good point. Atlantis, I actually think they were before because I remember okay. them. In the, they just designed abutments. So they didn't do anything else. Sure. That. Sure. Something I want to touch on, it was, I'm sure when you started and the word outsource was thrown around, you know, that's got a lot of negativity to it. Yep. People outsourcing their dental lab work. How did you deal with the fact that you were still outsourcing, but not not the product, just yeah. the design. Was that something you ran into? Well, you know, I'll answer that question by stepping back into our prior lab days when we were facing doctors telling them that a hundred percent of our work was made overseas in China. That was not an easy sell. Yeah, I would say about about ten to twenty percent. Ten percent of the doctors said, "Get out of my office." And another 10% said, ah, I'm really not even interested in that. And the other 80%, we had to convince them to give us a try and then that we're quality minded and all this stuff. So the way I grew up in dentistry and the lab we had was selling against this idea of outsourcing, yeah. this sin mm -hmm. of outsourcing, so to speak. So 
when we were crafting our sales pitch for, for, for Full Contour, it was very simple. We copied what Apple did, and it was designed by Apple in California, manufactured in China. <laughs> huh. So yeah. we flipped it, and we said, designed by Full Contour in China, manufactured by you in the United States. And so our sales pitch to our customers was, look, yes, you're outsourcing the, the design, but you are doing that to bolster and grow your manufacturing process here in the United States. And that really resonated well because if a lab can tell the doctor, hey, I'm milling your crown locally in my lab, the doctor doesn't care where it's designed at that point. That is true. They just, yeah. they just want to know that the lab they're sending it to is accountable and that and if they're making it, manufacturing it with, you know, zirconia and milling machines and all that that they that they source locally, then beyond that, the doctor doesn't care if they outsource the design. So it really wasn't that big of an objection. There was a, a probably less than two percent of labs cared at the beginning. And now it's a it's a normal thing to outsource design. Most labs engage in it. I'm sure you ran into labs that we're against the idea that now use the service. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Well, if labs do anything, anything mathematically, and realize how much a designer makes a year, divide that by their numbers, divided by what it costs to pay for a design, it's really a no-brainer. It really is. I think the CAD technicians of today are kind of like the ceramists yep. were back in the mm -hmm. two thousand five. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it really is one of the higher paid disciplines in the lab. Mm -hmm. If you have a really good all around CAD designer that can do crown and bridge and can do implants and do maybe even do dentures, pff, he's going to be one of the highest paid people in your lab. Yep. Totally agree. How did you set your price on your designs? I mean, I don't know if we want to disclose it and I don't care if you do or don't, but oh, no, it's I'll cheap. Talk about that. I'll say that. But, well, <laughs> it's very easy. It was how much can we charge and still give away some value that people will want to outsource. There, there's this wonderful concept in business called a value gap. Yep. And so, Elvis, let's say you go out for a really nice steak dinner and let's say you pay $100 for that steak. Yeah. So let's say I say, okay, Elvis, what would you have paid? And what I mean by that question is, would you have paid $120? Would you have paid $150? You might say, man, Rob, this steak was so good. The atmosphere was so good. The, the service was so good that I would have paid 130 Yeah. But I, so you're really happy because you received $30 of excess value, mm -hmm. right? It's like a value surplus. Yep. If that sta same steak restaurant, you're like, well, I probably only would have paid 70 bucks. The steak actually, it wasn't worth 100 It wasn't any good. Should have gone to but, Outback. That's what I would have it, said. Exactly. <laughs> $35. So the idea was how much can we charge and leave a little bit of a value gap so that the customer is like, man, this was really worth it. This was better than I could do myself. Because I'll tell you guys, our greatest competition is not another design center. It is our competition, but our greatest competition is a lab saying, you know what? I can do this better myself. Yeah. Mm. I can hire my own designers and I can do this myself. And so we work really hard to deliver a price and a service that's better than a lab doing it themselves. And I don't want to put a lab down that's doing it themselves because there's hundreds of labs that do it themselves very successfully. But if we're going to exist as a service provider and bring value, the price we charge, it has to give them something versus doing it themselves. So back to your original question, the $5 price, we just, we just looked at labor rates across the country, the time to design, and we thought $5 was a fair price at that time to give them a, like we estimated it, it cost in actuality, maybe six to $8 to do a design back in 2010. And so we thought, well, if we charge five, that should be pretty attractive. And it was. It was, it was a nice, good, even, I mean, not an even number, but a nice, good round number. Yeah, it's memorable. How did you handle consistency? Because you're talking about China, Costa Rica. Yes. Were there just two labs or were there multiple labs in those countries? No, yeah. So one entity in China and one entity in, in Costa Rica. So one building with one group of designers in each place uh, that we owned, we hired, we trained. But the, the whole strategy around consistency, it's really simple. But it's, it's hard to execute, but the concept is simple. The first step is, did the lab communicate what they want in a way that our designer can understand? Just classic communication. And 
early on, labs would type in instructions. So oh typed instruction. Yeah. So you can imagine the longer the paragraph, what do you think the, the law of diminishing return? <laughs> yeah. That's right? a $35 stake after that. Less point. information. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But honestly, some cases they kind of need a paragraph, but yep. the reality is, is how do I say this in words, in English words, so that a designer who English is not their first language can actually read and understand. And it was a huge challenge. So our second year, we came up with a, a visual design guide. So we have pictures now. It's like just images that a lab can look through and they click on these images that visually represents what they want. Let's say they want a cutback. They want a porcelain cutback, right? But then do you want a collar with your cutback? Where do you want the finish line on your cutback? Do you want your contacts to be in porcelain or do you want your contacts to be in zirconia, right? Like all of these questions now come up with just talking about a cutback. And we have to have a code. We have to have a, an ability to, to communicate. And so we have visual codes for everything. We have probably over a thousand codes, which is totally overwhelming. But what we do is on our website, they're all contextual. So you only see the abutment codes when you're ordering an abutment. And you only see the denture codes when you're ordering a denture. And then the lab can create their own groups and create their own favorites. Oh, yeah. So they can say, hey, here's my design code groups for this DSO right? Or my design group for dentures or my design group for wax crowns or zirconia crowns or Emacs crowns. And then what a lab can do is then just get really efficient with how they communicate with us. And then they communicate in pictures. So then when our designer sits down to design an order, now they have to be trained, right? So clear instructions only get you so far. Sure. Now we have to have a designer on the other end that is qualified to design an abutment or qualified to, to design a three unit bridge mm -hmm. or a full mouth case or a all on X implant hybrid, which is, you know, a lot more sophisticated. So we have very rigorous training protocols. We use a learning management system called Docebo. Mm -hmm. It's just a cloud-based system where you can upload course content and you can then have your designers or your employees, in our case, our designers, they take a course they take a quiz, they get graded, and then we get proof of completion, right? So we can actually measure how many designers have taken this course and what was their grade, mm, what, nice. was their, what was their score. Wow. And then we get feedback. So after we upload a case back to the lab, we have a feedback system. A lab can give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And if they give us a thumbs down, they can give us further feedback of, I didn't like the contacts, didn't like the occlusion, I didn't like the emergence profile mm -hmm. or the line angles or whatever it is. Well, that feedback goes into our database and every designer gets a report card of how many cases did they design that month. They get a base pay and a bonus pay. And then they also get a bonus demerit based upon quality feedback. Wow. So if a designer is cutting corners yeah. and uploading work that's not high quality, they might get a $100 bonus that month but then it will get knocked down to 75 bucks if they got a bunch of negative feedback. Pretty smart. Those are some of the things we wow. do to manage our quality and to communicate and to train, reward our designers for good behavior, and then you know keep track of the ones that aren't producing good quality. I'm impressed with the amount of options you're giving labs to be able to keep up with that consistency. Because it seems like it'd be a lot easier just to say, these are the contacts we do, and these are the contacts you're going to get. Elvis, oh my gosh. <laughs> if I could get away with that, I would. Yeah. I would. There is no way you could get away with that. <laughs> no. High occlusion, centric occlusion, out of occlusion, tight contacts, low time. Oh, God. Yeah. That's very important. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, I know what you, you mean by those pictures and, and the choosing. You have a default. Oh, 100%. Like if you don't select anything, it goes to this default. Yep. What percentage do you think just defaults everything? I love that question. I would say probably maybe 30% of Only our orders. Only 30, really? Yeah. Well, when I say default, that means they didn't change anything so there is a lab profile they can change. Yeah. Meaning, so our default contact is a 30 micron contact. So if a lab never changes it, he's just going to get 30 micron contact. Now, the reason it's our default is because it's one of the most popular. Sure. But a lab can change it to 20. 
and you can change it to 40. And then if they change it, they can just say, hey, for All Might, it's like a global oh, preference. My new for default. All Might, yeah. right. So the lab goes in and they tweak their own defaults. So there's a, a lab default that just covers all of their cases. And then there's a case-by-case -case RX, right? So this case-by-case mm -hmm. -case RX, the lab could say, on this case, change my contacts to 50. Mm -hmm. But if they don't say that, it'll go back to their default, which maybe it's 40, right? So labs have a default, which is, is like their global preferences. Yep. And then they have a case-by-case -case ability to manipulate those settings as well. So most of our labs manipulate at least their lab default. Okay. But then you can also switch and change, and then you've got your own preferences. And so you might want your DSOs over here with tight contacts, but on this side, you know, you want them light. So you eventually create your own kind of library, preference library, correct? Yeah. So we figured out that labs, you know, they want to do the least amount of manipulating on a case-by-case -case basis, right? And so we created different design groups where they a lab can, like you could create an XYZ DSO design preference group for all your crowns, but then you could create a, let's say you have Dr. Smith has a, you know, he's a heavy cutter and he's got five doctors in his clinic and he's doing a bunch and he's got specific stuff. So you could have a Dr. Smith design group and then you could have another one. And so when you're uploading a big batch of cases, you could say, apply my DSO settings to this whole batch of 50 crowns. Boom, one click, you're done. Yep. Right. And then same thing, right? So you, the power of the platform we've built was honestly, it's just built on constant feedback from our customers on, you know, one of the complaints I hate is when a customer says, Rob, it takes too long for me to make decisions to upload orders. And so, <laughs> I mean, we hear, we've heard that over the years. And so it's like, okay, how do we save you time? If you're going to sit down and send us 20 crowns, if it used to take you five minutes, how can I improve things so it only takes you one minute, hmm. right? Because I want a lab to have the ability to send us the most amount of orders in the least amount of time, because then that's good for my greatest competition, which is a lab designing himself. If he's like, you know what, it only takes me about a minute to send full contour 20 orders. I think I'll go home now and just send them these 20 orders. But if it took him 20 minutes to send me these 20 orders, he might decide, eh, I'll just design them myself. Hmm. Right. Yeah. And so that's, we worked really hard over the years to make it fast and easy and a low cost of time to send us orders. I'm surprised you just don't say, we've already done the design for you. What more do you want? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, now there's competition. We yes. Gotta, True. Got to stay sharp. Yeah. Now it's owned by 3Shape. Yes. Originally, did you only deal with the 3Shape, or did you also do ExoCAD, or has it always been only 3Shape? On day one, we offered 3Shape and Dental Wings designs. Oh, Dental Wings. Right. Yeah. Remember Dental Wings? Yeah, how's that going for you? <laughs> yeah. We don't have any seats of Dental Wings anymore. You know, we didn't care. We didn't push one software over the other. What we realized is labs want whatever software they scanned in and they design in, they just want the case back in their native software. Mm -hmm. So we did three shape designs for three shape customers, and we did dental wings designs for dental wings customers. Well, three shape stormed the market. Yeah. Three yeah. shape was the preferential software by Core 3D, by Argon. Henry Schein promoted it through Zahn a lot. And I think three shape has like, like 80 or 90% of market share in North America. And really that was huge for us because then we didn't have to like train and maintain two different seats of software at the time. Now we do have ExoCAD and we also do some Serona in-lab designs as well. And oh. three shapes actually been really cool about that. When they bought us, we asked them, we're like, Hey, we'd like to stay neutral to the market and design in whatever native software our labs want us to design. In. And they were like, yeah, that's cool. Do whatever you guys need to do to be a successful business. And it was great. So we still design an ExoCAD even to this day. We are an ExoCAD customer. And will they have to go to the Three Shape Design website eventually for ExoCAD? To place an order from us? You yeah. Mean? Yeah. So, you know, today you go to fullcontra.com and you log in. Next year, it'll be you go to design.threeshape.com ah. is, is the URL that's coming. And you'll just log into your account. Nothing will change. The logo on the top left, instead of it saying full contour, it's just going to say three shape design services. Yeah. But that's it. Everything else is going to be the same. They're going to take the platform that we wrote. So we wrote our own design services platform. 
the Full Contour platform. And if you guys remember a few years back, we started off calling it Drop Dental. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember that. that. Remember that? Remember yes. that? Yeah. yeah. We thought we were geniuses. In hindsight, it was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> the, the reason why is it, it cre- I'll tell you a funny story. This is great. So we're in Chicago, LMT Chicago. We're in our booth. It's probably like, I don't know, 2014, 2015. Drop Dental had been out for about a year. So we wanted to give the platform its own name because it did some cool things and we wanted it to be a separate brand from Full Contour. We thought we were creating value and all this stuff and, mm-hmm. and we were really excited about it. This lab comes up to us, oh, you're the Full Contour guys. Man, we're so happy to see you. We were sending cases to Drop Dental and we didn't really like how the cases were turning out. So we <laughs> want to send them to you instead. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I just looked at him and said, oh, I'm so glad you're here. How can yeah, I help? Yeah. <laughs> So it was brand confusion, right? Like we named a platform to to have a brand name because it did some things, but it caused our customers to think that it was actually its own design center. Yeah. But it it wasn't. It was a piece of technology. And so when we realized that, we kind of had to swallow our pride and we just renamed it the Full Contour Platform. Mm -hmm. Well, that used to be Drop Dental. So now it's the Full Contour platform. It is an amazing piece of technology. We sourced and developed it ourselves uh, with a, a local developer here in Arizona. And now we have developers in Ukraine that work on it as well. It is our product that we developed. And I, I think it's just as important to the end result of the design service, the design itself. I think the product and how we interact and how people upload cases to us and how they get those cases back it's just as important as our service itself. So we've invested heavily into it. Oh, I think it's a majority of it, the ease of it and bringing it in and out and going directly to places like Oregon. I mean, that's pretty, pretty fancy. That's, that's a quite a feat. Yeah. We have a direct integration with three shape dental system. So if you scan in three shape inside of your dental manager, you can just right click and send a full contour without even ever having to do anything else. That's pretty amazing. And then we've got a, an FTP integration back into your three shape inbox. And so a lot of cool integration workflow tools that save time and, and add efficiency, uh, which labs really love. Yeah, for sure. Earlier, you mentioned AI. Yes. And I know artificial intelligence is becoming more popular. Yep. Yep. It's the big new thing. What is it? How are you involved with it? Where are we? G- give us the uh, artificial intelligence lowdown. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll start by saying you need to watch a TED Talk by a guy named Kai Fu Lee. He's he's a Chinese fellow. Yep. Uh, he's from Silicon Valley area. And he does this TED Talk on on AI. And I'll sum it up into a single sentence. Humans can be creative and we can be like loving and compassionate and AI can never do that. Hmm. But what, what AI can do is it can do math and it can do program. Like it can, it can do a repetitive task over and over and it can do complex repetitive tasks over and over, but it can't be creative. Hmm. And that's important to know in dentistry, even take a single unit molar. So we've done over 800,000, AI molars, and we have a 91% acceptance rate. What that means is 91% of the time, a dental lab uploads a case, they see an AI proposal, and they download and pay for it, mm. which is which is pretty awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. But what happens to the other 9%? They don't work. There was something that happened. Maybe there was a deep undercut on the margin that needs a dental technician to look mm-hmm. at it. Maybe there was a missing adjacent tooth or a missing opposing tooth, or there was just this really wonky adjacent c- contact, or they had other crowns in the mouth that were terrible, right? Or they yeah. had a, an RPD that was scanned, right? So there's all of this creative problem solving in dentistry that absolutely still needs a qualified, trained human dental technician to solve. Mm-hmm. And it, it's creative thinking is what it is, right? A doctor gives you a problem, a Rubik's cube and you have to come up <laughs> with a solution, right? And yeah. it's, it's imperfect. And so AI is good with the predictable stuff. So a single unit molar, you got two adjacent contacts, you have an opposing crown and AI does a great job of designing a crown. And there's 
other AI products that are going to come to the market soon. And I think ours is pretty awesome because we've built it over the last three, four years with all of the data that we had and our partnership with 3Shape and just how we, I mean, 3Shape's been designing CAD software for 20 years. Mm -hmm. We've been designing crowns for the past 11 years. Mm -hmm. I got to believe that the quality of the algorithm and the machine learning inputs that we that we accomplished are pretty good. Yeah. And they are good. And so AI can can solve repetitive problems. I think is probably the the easiest way to put it and and a single unit molar is is a an easy target. I'll say something positive about the use of AI is that you need your skilled designers to be spending time on the skilled cases, the interiors, the hybrids. And so to have all of that doing these single posterior units, it's like, get rid of it. Go to AI and focus on the the steak. Totally get it. I can truthfully say that I have not had any conversations with any lab owners that that I'm aware of where they were like, hey, sweet, I'm going to use AI and lay off some of my staff. Right, exactly. It hasn't happened, and the reason it hasn't happened is because, like, sweet, I can use AI for the simple stuff, and now I can have my designers work on dentures or full mouth cases or hybrids, or we can do a little more R&D, or we can do splints, right? These other indications that need a more qualified, you know, CAD designer to tackle, and it's like, man... How many doctors have really complained and, and left your lab over you know the lack of high quality single unit molars? Right, bingo. Right, that yep. that's not it's not why they leave you, you know, and it's not why you attracted them. As a lab, you attract your doctor because you're a, you're a resource. You you can do the more complex cases. You have great customer support, mm-hmm. and and I think the labs that are smart, like we have a number of labs sending us hundreds of AI crowns a day, like hundreds a day. And they oversee them. They make sure the quality is good. They use our, our dental system integration. They have the ability to make a few tweaks that they want. But their doctors don't know. And the doctors don't need to know no. because the lab is owning. They own the, the milling. They own the staining and glazing. They own the final QC. That's what matters. Yeah. So how do you get to a good AI? Are you just feeding some program all the crowns you've made over the year? I, I can't really go into the how we did it. I can just say Full Contour is a design company for 10 years, 3Shape as a CAD software for company for 20 years. We got together and we took the best and the brightest engineers um, and software developers and we created something really special. And you guys had a child and together pretty much. We did, pretty much. <laughs> we had an, a- an AI baby. <laughs> But we've mentioned a lot with crowns here. I mean, you do so much more. I mean, you do splints and dentures and everything, right? Pretty much. Yeah. So on the AI side, we have crowns. We now do multi-unit crowns. We also have copings and multi-unit coping cases. We also have night guards. So we're, so we're doing flat plane night guards. We also have a cloud editor with our AI product for AI night guards. You can upload a case get a Nike design in minutes. You have a cloud editor where you can preview the proposal, make a few edits, and then download the case. So on the AI side, we have three products, crowns, copings, and night guards. On the, the dental technician side, on the human side, pretty much everything. Mm-hmm. Crowns, hybrids, dentures, surgical guides, clear aligners. Frames. Partial frames, exactly. Cool. Basically, if it can be designed in dental system or ExoCAD, we want to design it. Do you think AI will eventually do all those other things? I think AI will assist a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. There is a strong case for a single unit molar. A lab in many scenarios could take a finished AI design, not touch it, mill it, stain it and glaze it, and send it out the door. As long as it fits the model and do their final QC checks, they could take it as is. Mm -hmm. Let's take a full mouth case. We're not doing them yet with AI. But eventually, I think in the next year or two, I'd like to believe we'll come up with some AI libraries that work for full mouth cases. What are the odds that you're going to have a 91% acceptance with full mouth cases with AI? Yeah, no doubt about it. Probably yeah. pretty low. Sli- <laughs> maybe, yeah. let's say our full mouth acceptance is 50%. Do you think labs would be happy at 50%? No. I wouldn't pay for it if well, it was hold on. half hold on. chance. <laughs> You don't pay for what you don't download. Oh. So if you don't like it, you don't pay for it, huh? 
Exactly. With AI, you can look at it for free and you only pay for it after you decide you like it. So if there was a 50% chance that it nailed it for you, would you give it a try? I'd give it a try. How long does it take to get them back? You could have it as, you know, 30-minute design is our most popular, and it's $2.50. Damn. So you could see the results in 30 minutes. <laughs> That's insane. So now, let's say that full mouth case, let's say you liked it, but it was only... 80% there, and you knew that you were going to have to import it in a dental system and make a few changes that would take you 10 to 15 minutes. Would you pay for it knowing that what normally would have taken you an hour to an hour and a half to design a full arch? Now you can get a really advanced AI proposal and I'm tweak it in 10 to 15 minutes. Yes, I would go for would it. You... Yep. Yes, I'm down. I say yes all day, every day. Perfect. You're making my case for me, and I'm going to send this clip to our three shape development team because <laughs> so for the single unit molars, it really is a finished product. I think for other AI applications, it's going to be a partially finished product mm -hmm. where labs will be willing to pay a small amount, a decent amount for a, a case that's like 80, 90% done that they know they have to go tweak it. That's okay because they got it faster and they saved a, a ton of time. So my prediction is the future of AI design and dentistry will be less about complete design. And it'll be more about, you know, partially, you know, finished design that a lot of still willing to pay for. Yeah. Sometimes it takes my designers hours and hours and hours to just do the damn margins or something freezes up and then she's designing it and she loses it and blah, blah, blah. It drives me crazy. And her cart just keeps stacking up with all this work. So yeah, I mean, if she could tweak it, that'd be great. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Rob, I know we've covered a lot. I know you've talked about the past and the present, and you've talked about the future. Is there anything else you haven't mentioned that's exciting coming from what used to be Full Contour? You know, I mean, nothing I can speak to as of far course. as anything we have in the, <laughs> the, the, the development pipeline. I, I can just say that 3Shape invests a lot of money into R&D. I, I think they're one of the heaviest investors into research and development on the software side and the hardware side. I mean, the Trios 5 is an amazing piece of technology. Yeah. And we're only going to get more integrated into 3Shape products. And we're only going to make, you know, 3Shape automate better and better. There will be other indications that we add to it that we're doing some research on now. I can't say what that is, but obviously... I'm sure you guys could take a guess on just what would be really exciting and relevant mm -hmm. to the market. And so, yeah, so just keep an eye out on 3Shape Automate and we'll make a lot of announcements on social media and trade shows on, on what's coming. Awesome. I do want to say this, that digital dentistry is the most profitable form of dentistry, period. And, and it's the best form of dentistry for clinical outcomes, period. So labs that are still receiving physical impressions and doing old school processes. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but I passionately believe you can make more money and do better dentistry when you do it digitally. Yeah. Like, I mean, Barb, back me up here, a digital workflow, an iOS scan coming into the lab, it's the most profitable crown you'll make. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so labs should be promoting iOS scanning like crazy. I don't just believe that because we do designs. I believe that because it's true. Yeah. And I, and I think labs need to get hustling after getting their doctors digital. Spend the time to take away the PBS and replace it with an interall scanner. I think Trios is awesome, but there's other ones out there. And digital workflow, is it's going to help you scale and grow and be profitable. And of course, if you need help, help with design, we're there for you too. But man, get after. I mean, the, the percentages I'm hearing from, from Crown and Bridge Labs, it's still like probably best I've heard is 30 to 40% iOS and 50 to 60% impressions. Barb. Wow, we're like 80, 80 digital now. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Good time. Yep. Come good to Indiana you. and they look at you weird. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Rob. That was yeah, awesome. thank you yeah. so much. Thanks for coming on the podcast and really for kind of creating the service, which has helped so many labs. I know a lot of labs use your service to help scale, yeah. to help get things done, to keep things moving, to keep people employed. You know, it's not like you're replacing designers no. or yeah. It's Helping not, them grow their business really. Absolutely. Are. I mean, every lab still needs designers in their lab 
You're just taking on that extra, and we appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's been a lot of fun. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. And I guess we'll see you in Chicago. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you then. Thank you. See you. Bye. A big thanks to Rob. Now, we mentioned that we recorded this interview a few months back. Rob wanted to come back on the podcast and give everybody a quick update on the change from You Got It, Full Contour, to the new Three Shape Design Services. So, Rob, we recorded this interview a couple months ago. Yes. As it releases, here we are, early February, and you're no longer Full Contour. Full Contour went away. It's over. It is gone. One of my favorite names. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for a company in our industry, it's now rebranded. It's Three Shape Automate. No, Three no. Shape Design Services. Three. Sh- it's now Three Shape Design Services. Correct, correct. And it's Three Shape Design Services plural because where your mind was going is yes, there's Three Shape Automate, which is our AI design platform, and then we have Three Shape Design Service, which is what everyone knows as the full contour design service, right? So the full contour design services was found on, at the full contour platform at fullcontour.com. And all of that has now changed. So now you go to three shape design services and you will learn about three shape automate, which is our AI product. And you'll learn about three shape design service, which is our dental professionals, our dental technicians providing design services for you, just like we always have for the last 11, 12 years, crowns, bridges, abutments, surgical guides, the the whole bit. And a lot of people ask, okay, so why the change? Uh, First, I need to say that it's the same leadership. I'm not going away. My team's not going away. All of the same designers are here. And so nothing's changing as far as the leadership of the company. As far as the designers that we have, nothing's changing there. Nothing's changing on your pricing. Nothing's changing on your workflow. So everything's the same as far as price, workflow, the team, and all that kind of stuff. What's enhanced or improved and then some of the new advantages that we'll be offering to 3Shape users throughout the year is like, for example, dental system subscribers, we're going to look at ways to give them benefit as they renew their mm. not so inexpensive dental system annual subscriptions. We're going to tie in some benefit for a three shape automate or a three shape design yeah, service, yeah. right? And just really just get more cohesive, more integrated. So if you're a three shape user, that three shape design service and three shape automate is here to help under the banner of three shape design services. So that's that's what we are. And I've got to learn to stop saying full contour. <laughs> <laughs> well, for all of us that have full contour bookmarked on our web browser. Will it redirect us? It will redirect. Yes. My dev team has uh, has crystal clear instructions that there should be no interruption to people's URLs. So we will maintain all of the old URLs that will just auto forward and redirect. So if you stumble over to fullcontra.com, it will then just redirect you to where you need to go. So the two login URLs, one will be automate.3shape.com that's where you'll log in for three shape automate and the other one will be design.3shape.com and that'll be where you log in for uh, design service easy enough yes, and since we have lab day chicago in a few weeks i take it no full contour booth we will be inside of the three shape booth you are correct and i'll have some new t-shirts so i, I won't be wearing a full contour t-shirt anymore i know my my wife's going to be excited because I have a whole drawer filled with them. I just imagine a whole closet full of black T-shirts that said yes. Connor. Yes. I probably have, no joke, probably like 18 of them in my top dresser drawer. It's designated. <laughs> it's my, my work uniform. I will be replacing it with a new branded three-shaped shirt, which I think is really super cool. Elvis, I'll give you one. Sweet. And I'll be carrying them around in my backpack. If any of you at, in Chicago tap me on the shoulder, I'll give you a shirt. Nice. Reshape design services. Exciting. Yeah. Outside of the podcast, I actually have a real job. I know. It's hard to believe. I get to work directly with dental offices to provide amazing smiles to patients. But don't we all? But I do it with data instead of a handpiece or a mill. 
I use data that most labs already have but don't know how to access it or use it. Enter iCortica. I-C-O-R-T-I-C-A. If your lab is already using Magic Touch, great, you're halfway there. If you aren't, then go get Magic Touch just so you can use iCortica. It will be worth it. Let's be honest, access to easy to understand information is the key to any sales or customer service position. Did I mention that they have bar graphs? This is exactly what iCortica does for me on a daily basis. Every morning, I wake up to an email showing me the risks and the opportunities across all of the customers. I can then dive in to see specific customer information and look at so much like sales by product, trends by category or restoration. I can see all the notes and I can even see their remake percentage. It allows me to know who I should talk to about what without having to spend hours digging into production software or making a ton of Excel spreadsheets. It's all right there. Every metric I need to be successful. So do yourself and your lab a favor and head over to icortica.com forward slash voices or send Rob Nazelle an email at rob at icortica.com and start understanding your dental offices in a way you never had before. Check out this episode's show notes for all of those links, and we thank you for your support of the podcast, Icortica, and I personally thank you for making my job easier. Again, thank you so much, Rob, not just for coming on the podcast and telling us your amazing story of success, but also for bringing Full Contour to our industry and for allowing labs all over the ability to scale and grow with digital. Even if you use Full Contour for all your designs or for just a few, they have always been there and we love the fact that they will still be there in the Three Shape family. So guys, be sure to see them in a few weeks at the LMT Lab Day Chicago at the Three Shape booth. Thank you, Rob. Awesome, everybody. That's all we got for you. And we will talk to you next week. Have a good one. Bye. Oh, and are allowed...